Hey, what's up guys? It's Coach Mack. Play fast football. Today we're going to talk about uh, tempo one word calls. All right. I know uh, I've done a bunch of videos on some tempo stuff before. I've done a, a, a video on uno calls or, or one word calls, but uh, had uh, one, of, one of the followers on uh, and subscribers to the, to the YouTube channel and, and one of my followers on Twitter, Larry Howe, Coach Larry Howe, who's an avid uh, Alabama fan, so I can't deny a request of an Alabama fan, roll tide. So uh, he wanted to take a look at actually tempo versus one word calls or what the difference is or how they fit together. And, you know, basically what you're looking at is, is when it comes to the tempo of what, of what you're trying to accomplish, one word calls are basically, the way I look at it, it's like an efficiency of movement. All right, so, you know, the tempo is, is the way that, that we want to move. It's the way that we want to function. It's the process that we want to use. So we want to talk about the overall word tempo. All right, well, one word calls make the movement more efficient. Okay, so you can, you can play at a very fast tempo. You don't need one word calls. As long as you have a simple way of communicating things to your offense and your kids understand how to get from point A to point B and get lined up really quickly and how to get signals from the sideline, all right, it's, it, you don't need to have everything as a, a one word play call to be a tempo team. Tempo is really more about the procedure and the process of how you operate. So when you're building a tempo team, you've got to get kids to understand the sense of urgency to get lined up, to get to the next ball, to get wherever the play is or wherever the play ends, to teach them about where the play ends and where the ball is going to be spotted to get kids to understand how to hand the ball to an official and not throw it all over the place so if the officials have to chase the ball around, it's going to slow everything down. How do we get, after one play, how do we get our eyes to the sideline so that we can get the formation, all right, ready to go and the signal for the next play? It's really, you know, tempo to me is more of an operating procedure. Um, it's, it's obviously, it's not, a, it, it's not a, a, an offensive formation. It's not an offensive play call. It's not an offense. It's not really an offensive system. All right. It's really just a a, a procedural uh, type of deal or or a, a means of how to operate within an offensive system. All right. So what one word calls do is they make the operating procedure more efficient. All right. So all you're trying to do is you're trying to to find ways that you can run your base offensive plays with one word that tells everybody what to do so that when you signal that play in, that play can be signaled in very shortly, quickly, efficiently, which is going to help the tempo, right? So, you know, if you were to look at, obviously, you know, you, you, can, you can equate any play you want with tempo or any formation or anything. I always go back to two back, twins, two by one, all right, um, for me, because I think you can do about everything in your offense that way, but that's when I draw things up for a video, I usually just, um, you know, I, I, I kind of revert back to that drawing all the time because I think it, it can accomplish everything you want to accomplish. We'll look at it um, against a 3-3 box today since normally we draw everything versus an even front. But if you were to just start standard inside zone, okay, whether you're an inside zone team or not, all right, doesn't really matter. If you were to just start with standard inside zone and you want it to run inside zone, all right, towards the single receiver, okay, and for argument's sake, you were going to take your fullback or your sniffer and you were going to kick this defensive end here, all right, and you were going to create a six on six in the box scenario, and then outside here, you were just going to run simple, all right, stick or a little bit wider hitch there, all right, and then on the back side here, all right, we're always going to talk about our access throws, right? So here's what we're trying to create. We're trying to create a system in which we can have a play that we like, all right, and a play that can handle different fronts and different looks and different numbers so that the quarterback has a system built in of how he can answer all the different numbers that he needs to answer if they get an eighth guy in the box, if it's man-to-man. -man. We have to have all those things built in, right? But what ends up happening is you have to think about all the things that go together to say, okay, you know, for argument's sake, let's say, you know, zone left for us is, all right, Zelda. All right, so let's say we start off and we call the zone left play Zelda. Well, then we've got to get to a point where we want to kick that defensive end, all right, so we have to put the term kick in, right? So 
Now we've got to add Zelda kick to let us know that we want the sniffer to kick that, that defensive end. All right? But then out there, let's say we're going to run, all right, uh, we're going to run the hitch concept. And, and just for argument's sake, I know it's not exactly what everybody think it is, but just for argument's sake, let's say that that's stick, right? So what ends up happening now is in order for us to run that play within our terminology, we have to come out and we have to say, hey, that play is, uh, that play is, is, you know, let's say it's twins right, all right, stack, twins right, slant, twins right, near, whatever the backfield set is, and we run around Zelda, kick, stick, okay, all right, let's just change for now, let's change stick because kick and stick kind of rhyme, so let's just say we want to run, all right, Zelda, kick, fist, okay, so we want to run Zelda kick fist, and we want to tell our receivers that the fist combination is an inside hitch by number two with a vertical by number one. All right, to the front side, the X receiver, because the zone's going at him, is going to have the access throw. So in order for us to call that play, we have to call Zelda kick fist. Okay? So in the tempo world, what you're looking to do is you're looking to find ways to say, hey, I want to be able to run this Zelda kick fist play, all right, and I want to crank the tempo up. I don't want to have to signal those three different things to get everybody to understand what to do, all right? You know, what if, for argument's sake, all right, if we just call this play, all right, for argument's sake, we just call this play smoke, all right? And we told our kids, listen, every time we run smoke, it's Zelda kick fist, okay? So every time we run smoke, it's Zelda kick fist, all right? So what I would do in a tempo setting is I would get into a set where... I set the formation this way, all right, and let's just say, all right, for argument's sake, let's just say that, that this set, all right, because we're the Orange Park Raiders, let's just say that I call this set Raider, okay? So that every time that I said Raider, our kids would get into, all right, twins right open with a near backfield formation, okay? So when I say Raider, all right, we're always going to be in a twins right formation with a near backfield. So now that that is set and we know that, that, that Raider equals twins right, near, slant, stack, whatever you want to call it, all right, whatever you want to call your twins open formation, once you know that Raider is that, now here's where you can get into the tempo deal because now smoke can always be, all right, Zelda kick fist. Now, why can it always be Zelda kick fist? Because the formation is always going to be set this way in this Raider formation, okay? Because for argument's sake, if I came out, all right, if we came out and we wanted to put the twins on the other side, all right, if we came out and we put the twins over here and we put the stack or the slant on this side and we put the single receiver over there, okay? And now we get down to looking at it to say, all right, listen, let's run the same theory of play, right? Let's run the same theory of play. So now it's zone to the right, all right? So it's no longer Zelda. Now all of a sudden it's Zorro, okay? And now if we still ran the fist combination, Okay, this now becomes Zorro, kick, fist. Okay? The other play was Zelda, kick, fist, right? This is Zorro, kick, fist. So we can't call this play smoke, because if I were to say smoke, my kids are going to want to run Zelda, kick, fist. Okay? So let's say all of a sudden now that play had to be fire. All right? What you're doing is you're just word associating certain plays, and you're putting... Your, your offensive system together to where you're going zone, kick, RPO with the fist concept, and you're just combining it all into one word so that you can play fast, right? So now all of a sudden, Zelda kick, fist was smoke, but Zoro kick, fist was fire. Okay? That's how you'd have to build in some of your one word play calls and have to, how you'd have to build things in, all right, so that you could effectively, all right, play at, at, as fast as you would like to play, right? 
So what happens is some people don't like that. Some people like to be more flexible when they get into formations because now all of a sudden, hey, I want to change this ever so slightly, and now I want to run this as an ISO theory, okay? And I really like my number one receiver, all right? I really like my number one receiver, so now I want to run this as a corner and a fin by number one because now when we RPO, all right, now when we RPO that strong safety, I really want my number one to get the ball, not my number two, right? All right, so we've got to go back and say, hey, this is Zorro, okay? This is Zorro insert instead of kick, and now, okay, this is fin, not fist. So that play all of a sudden becomes Zorro insert fin, all right? It doesn't become Zorro kick fist. It becomes Zorro insert fin, all right? Well, you want to go into tempo world and you want to find a way, right? We talked about smoke and fire. You want to find a way. Now all of a sudden you have to have another word for Zorro insert fin, all right? And again, for argument's sake, let's just say we call that one ice, okay? What ends up happening is, is you're creating these one-word play calls so that your kids are running your base offense the way you know how to run it. You're not creating anything new. You're not doing anything different, all right? You're creating these one-word play calls so that your kids know how to run your offense and you're trying to run it faster, all right? So you got to a point where you, you, you said, hey, all right, this smoke play... All right, we knew that this smoke play was Zelda, and we knew that it was kick with the fist. All right, and then we knew that this fire play was Zorro, and it was kick with the fist. Okay, and then we knew that this ice play was Zorro, but it was insert with a fin. All right, so now we're taking all of our offensive concepts, all the things that we like to do with the sniffer, all the different packages that we like to use where we kick and we insert. We can also wham a guy inside. We could also use, all right, we like to use the fullback in the flat as one of our, all right, to me it's more double option than it is RPO stuff, but we like to use the fullback in the flat. We like to read the five technique. Okay, so versus split field coverage team, six Six in the box with the seventh or eighth coming down a week. What we like to do is we like to run the zone play, all right, at the single, all right, and we like to block the overhang, block the corner, leak the fullback out in the flat, run the zone, read the five technique there, okay? So when you get back to our base terminology, let's just for argument's sake, this play is Zelda, okay, sneak, all right, so that play for us becomes Zelda sneak. Alright, so it's not as bad. It's only got two combinations, not three combinations, or two words, not three words. So that play becomes Zelda Sneak. But all of a sudden, we want to put it in a one word call. Alright, so we just call it Slice. Alright, so now when I say Slice, you guys run Zelda Sneak. Okay? So now we've taken Zelda Sneak from two signals and two words, put it into Slice, and now we've made that concept, same concept, running the same play, we've made it a one word call. Okay? You want to look at it, all right? You look at like stick draw. Okay, so if you looked at like three by one stick draw, which was a big play for a while, you could either run it as a quarterback ISO or you could run it uh, quarterback ISO if you want to. You can run it as a regular zone play to your tailback if you want to, it doesn't really matter. All right, but let's take a look at, at stick draw, which was one of the first, or I don't know if it was one of the first, but uh, one of the bigger RPOs that started giving teams a lot of, a lot of problems. And so on the outside here, what we're going to do, we're going to make it a little bit interesting. All right, a friend of mine uh, it, that is not coaching currently, but he, he seems to think that it might be a better combination versus certain coverages if you actually ran a wider hitch with one, you took two and ran the slot fade, and then you took three and you ran kind of the stick route, as opposed to traditional stick, which would be two on the arrow and one on the takeoff, right? He thought that this inside slot fade was a shorter throw than 
the takeoff to one, which is a ball that a lot of high school coaches, uh, uh, quarterbacks can't throw. All right, so the takeoff to one is almost not even an option. So he thought about, hey, what if you ran a little bit wider, hitch by one, which essentially becomes the out cut of two, and then two runs the slot fade, which is the flavor of the month right now. Slot fade is huge to, versus uh, one high cover one teams or a lot of slot fade teams in college that were making a, a lot of hay with this, with this route. So slot fade there, stick there. All right, so we're going to run zone here. All right, we're going to get this doubled up there. We're going to lock the backside. And then there's your RPO component. And then here is your access component, right? So you had, to, you had the stick draw play and you had it built in. So your offensive line was working a zone concept, but they were locking the backside. And you had the stick theory over there. All right, so what you end up doing is you put it into one word and you just say, hey, guys, this play is going to be Detroit. Okay, so when you call Detroit... All right, when you call Detroit, what you got to understand is now everybody has to know that it is stick, draw, offensive line as a blocking assignment, the gift or the access throw knows where it needs to be because you're in trips right right now. All right, so everybody knows that it's zone left with the backside locked. Okay, the thing about that is though, if you were to go, if you were to go trips to the other side, so now if you went trips to the other side, now all of a sudden you can't say Detroit anymore because now this becomes zone right. Okay. Alright, so now this becomes the zone play to the right. Alright. To where now you're working the combination there, you're locking the backside, the zone play is actually going to the right, okay, and now let's go back to traditional where we run it the traditional way, and now, okay, you've got the gift of the access on the right to the single, you've got the stick side over here off the mic linebacker, you've got the traditional stick drawn up right now, and you've got the inside zone play going there. All right, so now within the terminology, you go back and you look at it and you go, wait a minute, this is actually, how do I want to call this? Because I want the zone play going to the right. So do I want my linemen to understand it? Do I want my wide receivers to understand it? Do they have to know that the stick always happens on the back side of the zone? So now you go back and you look at it and you go, hey, wait a minute. Let's make this one Detroit because the zone play goes to the right and we'll call the other one Dallas. Because that zone play was going to the left. So now you get to your kids and you say, hey, look, all right, Detroit is stick draw, Dallas is stick draw. All right? They're both the same play, they both have single words. We're going to call them, all right, to the, to the side that we want the run to go. So Detroit is going to be the zone to the right, and Dallas is going to be the zone to the left. Okay? So when you start building your plays out, all right. When you start building your plays out, you want to have the flexibility to change back and forth. All right. So this is how you end up doing things. It's all trial and error. This is how you end up doing it. You draw up three by one. All right. And you draw up the stick draw play. So you draw it up like that. Okay. And you get your guys to understand that this is zone to the left, but we're locked back here. This is zone left, and now it's okay some type of stick draw combination out here, right? So now you go back and you say, well, how do I want to call this to make it easier for my players? The stick is actually happening on the right, but the zone play or the run is going to the left. Which one do you make it easier? So now you go back to these two and you say, okay, listen, Dallas could be one of two things. Do I want it to be Dallas because the run is going to the left and the kids have to know that the stick happens backside? Or do I want to call the stick the call side so Detroit has the stick on the call side but the run is going opposite? Okay? Either way, I don't think there's no right or wrong answer. You do it however you're comfortable. All I've done is I've given myself two words so that I can make this play go left and I can make this play go right and it's the same play so now I've got it down into one word. All right? So now that it's in one word, we can play a little bit faster. It's the same play, but I've given myself options by saying, hey, Detroit is going to be stick draw, whichever way I choose. Dallas is going to be stick draw the other way, whether I want to teach the stick based on the way the run goes. So this going to the left, 
If, if I do it based on where the run goes, this would be Dallas and the stick is backside. If I do it based on where the stick theory or the RPO read is, this would be Detroit and the run would go away from that. Okay? Me personally, I like to call things where the run go and then I like the quarterback and, and the receivers to understand where the screens or the RPOs are. Alright? So I want my linemen to be as comfortable as possible. So this to me would be some type of run to the left call in my terminology. Alright? I would make this a run to the left and I would let them know that this RPO is on the back side of it all the time. Okay? Now, the only issue that you're going to run into with one word calls, okay, the only issue you're going to run into with one word calls is when you want to be more multiple either in the run scheme or in all right, the, the route scheme. See, nowadays what we're getting into is we're getting into a world where the, the RPOs are starting to become like the old-fashioned zone blitzes. You can draw up a million of them. All right, so you can draw up a million different RPOs, so now you get yourself into a situation where you're starting to say, okay, I love all these combinations on these RPOs. And guys are getting funky and crazy with them, and you say, okay, you know, listen, I want to be able to run regular zone, all right, and I want to be able to kick this. And then I want to be able to change this, all right, and I want to be able to go zone lock, and I want to be able to insert this, okay. And then I want to be able to change the routes on the outside now, okay, so now if I go regular zone with a kick, I want to be able to run this as kind of a stick concept there, okay, then I might want to change it and I might want to run it as a whip or a return route, so I get the corner out, I get the ball working away from the strong safety, corner gets out and doesn't jump down or trigger right away on two to the out, but I want number two working out. Okay, I like my number one, so now I want my one coming inside and running snag with a corner. Okay, I like my number one getting the ball, so I want him getting the ball in the RPO. Okay, maybe there are two read teams, so what I want to do is I want my number one to get the ball. What I want to do though is I want to go bubble negative because when I go negative, their corner triggers, and I want to run five step fin with my number one. Because when I go negative, their corner triggers, their free safety gets eyes and feet over the top of one. There's the guy we're going to RPO on the zone play. He sticks his nose in here. I want number one to get the ball on the fin inside. So what starts to happen, all right, is you get all these different combinations, all right, of, of things that you can run on the outside, and then you get all these different combinations of things you can run in a run game that you like within the, the RPO world and you start putting them all together and you find out that you've got 55 combinations and I can't work them all into one word place. Okay? So what, what I end up doing, all right, what, for me, what I end up doing is sometimes if I wanted to play really fast, okay, I would lock the RPO and again, a lot of guys, they, you have to understand what works for you and what doesn't work for you. A lot of guys hate this because they hate being locked into things. What I would do in order to make it a one a one word call for me, I would lock the route of the RPO into the run scheme. All right, so that it becomes easier for the kids. So what I would do is I would say, okay, listen, when I want to run zone kick, okay, when I want to run zone kick, we are going to run the fist combination, okay, all right, so if I want to run zone kick to the single, it's going to be run with the fist combination, okay. As soon as I change it and I go zone insert, as soon as I make this, all right, the zone insert play, I'm going to change it and I'm going to make it snag corner by two, snag by one, okay. So zone insert, All right, it's going to equal a snag corner combination. Doesn't change anything on the back side of the access throws there. Now, why do I do that? Because now I can always get those into one word calls and the kids will know, all right, if I wanted to go zone kick and I wanted to go with different RPO combinations outside, okay, again, let's just say that that, that theory was, was, you called it smoke. Now you've got to go smoke fist, smoke fin, smoke bubble, 
Whatever your combinations are for your RPOs out here. So now you've got away from one word and you've gotten two words. So what I like to do to try and stay in one word is I say, okay, listen, zone kick will always be run with the fist combination. So you know what? We're going to call that smoke. Zone insert will always be run with the snag combination. Okay? So you know what? We're going to call that steel. So then our kids understand, hey, anytime you say smoke, I know that it's zone left, kick. Anytime you say steel, I know that it's zone left, insert. All right? And that's how you start building your tempo menu around your one word play calls. Okay? Now, what I do to take it a step further is I build in tempo formations that are always set the same way. Okay? So that when I want to do that, I know that that word never has to worry about going right or going left. It always goes the same way. So like I talked about the Raider formation, twins open to the right, near back stack to the right, so that if I call smoke, and smoke is zone left kick with a fist concept, I know that every time I call smoke, it's going to be that play. If I flip the formation, then i got to realize I have to have kids that understand, wait a minute now, smoke now needs to become zone right kick with the fist back here. Is it feasible? Yes. Can you do it? Yes. Do I like to do it? No. When I say smoke to my kids, I want to know that they're going to run zone left kick every single time. So I just build in little, little formations or, or little tempo formations into the deal that make it easier for the kids. Now, when I get into those formations, I'm locked into some things. So if I get into what I call Raider, twins open, stack backs near. First question I get all the time is, Coach, if you're in that formation playing fast and the ball's in the right hash mark, what do you do? I stay in it. Okay? I stay in it and I keep the tempo ripping. If I want to change the formation, it slows the tempo down. Right? So if I want to change the formation because the ball's now on the right hash and I want to do things to the field, by changing the formation, I've affected the tempo. Okay? So when we talk about tempo, one word calls, and we're trying to rip things as fast as possible, you got to understand how to make it easier for your kids. So all you do is you take all your different little theories, all right? And they're all basically. Uh, compartmentalized or segmented plays all right, built into one. So we've got zone theories where we're either kicking or locking and inserting all right, and then we've got route combinations and then we've got an access throw and all we do is we take those and combine them and you just make one word, one play. But it's all off your base offense. It's all built off the zone play or whatever your base. We do it off power. You can do it off whatever you really want to do. All right, As long as we have inside runs blocked six on six you can do it off anything you want, okay? But what ends up happening is you run into, you got 9 million things you want to do and 9 million words you want to use. It affects the tempo and it affects the efficiency of the play. Remember this, okay? The tempo at which you play will never, ever replace the execution of the play. The execution of the play is of the utmost importance, okay, to, to have success as an offense. So the tempo is great. Being a tempo team is great, but you still got to execute ball plays. Just because you draw it up with markers and an eraser, and you go, hey, when I call this, that's got to be there because they can't cover it. When I call this, that's got to be there because they can't cover it. You still have to execute ball plays. Your kids have to block. Your running back has to make reads. Your quarterback has to make reads. Your wide receivers have to run routes. They've got a stock blocker. They've got to make catches depending on what you're running. All right, so the tempo stuff will never, ever, all right, replace the execution. All right, the execution is always going to be paramount to the success of the offense. So when we go tempo, what I try and do is make it even easier for the kids to execute. I don't want them to be thinking about nine different things when it comes time to execute. I want them to execute. And then I, I just have to have a few wrinkles in there within the scheme to take advantage of some of the things that the defense can do to take away my base stuff. All right, But really, at the end of the day, here's the biggest question on offense. How much is enough? How much is too much? All right. Every offensive coach loves every football play known to man. What you got to figure out is how much is enough to attack, how much is too much. How much can I carry and attack everything in the defense I need to attack to where my kids can execute, and how much is too much to where I've got nine ways to attack everything I want to attack, but my kids can't do any of it. Okay, so at the end of the day, the execution of it all right, is going to outweigh the tempo of it. If you're going to be a tempo team, that's how you can build in some one-word play calls. All right, Larry Cochow, I really don't think it's tempo versus one-word calls. I think tempo and one-word calls build into how you play with tempo. All right, I don't think there's two different systems out there. I don't think there's a tempo system and a one-word call system. All right, I think there's tempo teams, and then I think all the tempo teams have figured out ways to call plays with one word or one signal to help the process 
Because remember, tempo is just a procedure. That's all it is, is an operating and a, and a communication procedure. So the one word plays end up helping the signals to help the procedure or the operating system all right, flow a little bit more efficiently. All right, so I hope you guys like that. Uh, always remember that uh, partnered up with GameStrat. All right, GameStrat is the most advanced, fastest replay system on the market. They're getting ready to ship theirs to me. I'll be using it this spring and next fall as our uh, sideline replay system. Just Play Sports, all right, we're using, I am using their digital software right now to make my playbooks, and then I'm going to have my kids logged in to where we can show our kids and make quizzes for our kids and do some, a lot of interesting little neat things with, uh, with Just Play. So GameStrat and Just Play are two companies out there that are helping football coaches, all right. Check out my latest video on, at CoachTube. I'll put the uh, YouTube coupon at the bottom of this video, but I've got a split field coverage video um, out on, uh, on, on CoachTube, and it's more than I can ever do on my free YouTube sites. I am also going to get a tempo and an RPO video done sometime in the next two to three months where I can go fully more into what we do, how we do it, what we call it, why we call it, and then have some game clips and some other things to show you because when I do the videos for CoachTube, I can get way more involved with PDFs and game clips and other things that I don't do on YouTube. All right, guys, I appreciate you checking it out. As always, you won't play well till you play fast. Check you out next time.